in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the gatekeeper of this particular program, known here on YouTube, Daily Motion, Vimeo, MySpace, and make sure that you friend me on Facebook under the name Sheshaw Teno Beta. I am. Not you, but me. I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snub Nub 7, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ebeen Ra. I would like to first send a few shouts out. And there are so many who deserve a shout out, but either I don't know really your name or we don't have enough interaction where as I can remember you at the making of this video, but always remember all of you, no matter how severe this ministry is false flag, channels terminating, you always will find me and you have a love for this word. And I really appreciate your viewership. I would like to send a shout out first to my student and minister of action, my assistant in this work, Brother Andre de Edmund, 1969-69. Judah, Ethiopia, from Facebook, and Jean Stewart, from Facebook. Sister Fanadia, Brother Super, uh, Brother Harvey Superboy, The Wacky World of O, Brother Michael 13X, Sister Brenda, uh, Kearney, Brother Universal Moore, Brother Maurice Muhammad, and uh, Brother David Brayboy. Thank you so much for being friends with this ministry. I appreciate you so much. And I hope that we encourage each other to stay strong to change the mentality or the mindset that is required so that our future generations do not continue to suffer and enter a new world that we deserve as a people. A world where we would like to see, but unfortunately it is not for us to see, but place others on the path so they can attain what we hope for, what we dream of, what we believe in, what we deserve again as a people. When I make my videos, I don't feel as though they are a waste of time. I feel as though they are to be used in a future time, the inspiration for future people, not necessarily for us living today. So I do know if I was representing some sort of religion, some other popular uh, viewpoint that we uh, form at the mouth over. It is very possible that I would be perhaps a national leader after all these years, very easily. 
by saying something, doing the things that we normally do and love. But I cannot do that and be sincere with you because all these things that we have embraced and made popular, all these things have done nothing for us. Not absolutely nothing. They have encouraged us in our thinking to move forward to a certain point. But we always wind up going backwards. We always end up stalled. This teaching that comes from the Realities Temple Ministry is not for everybody. In the scriptures, it says in the Bible that many are called, but few are chosen. It's just like applying for a job. You must qualify for that particular job. If you have no experience baking bread, baking cookies, baking cakes, how can you possibly apply for being a baker in some bakery? You don't qualify. Do you expect that someone who bakes cakes and pies and cookies, do you expect them to work on your car? It's possible that they can have both skills. But what we're looking for here simply is that for whatever you're trying to do, there must be qualification. And that is what this video is about. Qualification or the lack of qualification many of us will agree that the black man and woman the descendants of slaves born in America we are in a pitiful condition and that condition must change for the betterment of ourselves as well as our prosperity but we do not qualify to make that change we have an, an idea and we have the potential and it and it is in us to be able to make that transition but we're having problems accomplishing the mission most times when you have applied for a job before they give you the job they ask you to come in for an interview. And, inter and in an interview, they are trying to find out your qualifications, your attitude, and your desire of and what is your contribution to their company. Everyone that is interviewed Everyone that has certain qualifications do not get the job. So many applications are taken, but few are chosen. It is the same in this what we call black liberation, black revolution. It is the same thing. Just because somebody hollers, black power family, black Black power family. Oh, I am of black conscious. I'm black conscious. I'm Afrocentric. Just because we say those things do not mean that we qualify to be of black power, to be of black conscious, to be Afrocentric. All these things, all these titles that we place on ourselves. Talk is cheap. Action speaks. And our actions show that we do not qualify to be revolutionaries. We do not qualify to, to liberate ourselves. We don't have and fit the qualifications 
That's why we have yet to get the job done. In order to be a black liberator, in order to be a black revolutionary, one of the number one qualifications that you must have, and you can talk beautiful words all day long, and you can be, and your head can have so much wonderful, intelligent words. But in order to be a black revolutionary, a black liberator, one who really truly wishes to change the condition of his or her people, you must be brave. And there are so many of you, you attempt to give we who are the descendants of slaves born in America, you attempt to bring so much positivity to us so that we may have high self-esteem. But having or giving a person a sense of false self-esteem is just as bad as having low self-esteem. Because when it's all said and done, you are not brave. You come and I come from a cowardly people. And this is not being disrespectful. And I, and I know many of you will, be, will become angry. But please give me an opportunity to explain myself why I've come to this conclusion. And we must accept this reality. Thus, if you want to qualify for this job and you really want it, then you have to change something. You have to do something to qualify for this job. If you are not brave, and that is the number one requirement, then you cannot be, excuse me, you cannot be black power. You cannot be a black revolutionary. You cannot be Afrocentric. You cannot be none of these things because in order to make these things a reality, in order to be successful in these things, it's going to take sacrifice and bravery. And that is two requirements that we who live today, we don't have. We talk a good game. Talk. Beautiful words. Beautiful words that come from the pulpits and the rostrums and these lectures and these debates. We talk wonderful words, but they do not add up to being brave. They don't add up to that which will cause the change that is needed in order to secure what you claim that you want, which is the liberation. The true freedom, justice, and equality of the descendants of Africans born in America. I don't wish to be the carrier of ne negativity, but this is something we have to deal with. We are not a brave people. Let me explain this to, to us. Because I know many of you think that you are brave and you have what's required. But how can you have what is required when it has never been given to us? And you really don't know how to get it. Because it has never been for hundreds of years a natural part of you. It was bravery was taken away from us. How you think that the so-called Negro, the so-called African American, was enslaved for hundreds of years? You cannot enslave a brave people, one who do not fear death. You cannot enslave them for hundreds of years. You have to take that out of them, that, that, which, that part of life that is rebellious. You have to strip that out of the very nature of those of whom you want to domesticate. 
those of whom you want to enslave. I want to begin our talk by saying this to us. In human history, man had learned how to domesticate the beasts of the field. Some of them. You have made human beings because of your intelligence, our intelligence, we have made pets and chattel out of the lower intelligent life forms of this planet. Many of you, as you watch this video, you have your dog sitting next to you or your cat or your goldfish in a bowl. And you raise for food, cows and chickens and pigs and whatever. And the cow, the dog, the chicken and the cats. They were domesticated. All the fight that made them want to be free was taken out of them. And they became Something for you to exploit and use for yourself. These are animal slaves. And the purpose of any slave is to benefit his or her master. So the flesh of the cow becomes your flesh to eat. The eggs of the chicken becomes yours. The dog you were trained to hunt down criminals or hunt down possums or do whatever benefits you. The animal does not exist or live to benefit itself. Everything that it does benefits you who have become its master, you who have learned how to domesticate these lower life forms. Now, there are other animals that you may be able to kill and bully around, terrorize, but there are animals that refuse. See, there's a difference. There are certain animals that refuse to be domesticated. They refuse to be your slave. A perfect example of this, I was reading an article about squirrels. Don't believe that some of these suckers haven't tried to make a pet out of squirrels. But in the article that I was reading about squirrels, they make very clear, squirrels refuse to be your pet. They won't do it. No matter how much folks have tried, squirrels refuse to be your slave. Along with zebras and lions and many other animals, they have tried. Believe me, they have tried to enslave everything they find. But there are some life forms that refuse to be a slave. That refused to bow down and make his life a benefit to somebody else. And this is an animal. Now, this is amazing because you have a squirrel. You have a squirrel that refused to be a pet, that refused to be a slave. How is it possible that when these people with the slave owner, slave master mentality... When they decided to turn on other human beings, how was it possible that the so-called African, how did they find out? And why was it so easy? Why did the African accept being domesticated? How did the African accept being institutionalized? 
the best slave, the best human slave on the planet, the choice of others, the number one slave in the world. How is this possible? You need to really think about it. How can you enslave a black man, but you have problems enslaving a squirrel? Oh, <laughs> oh man, you got to, you really have to think about it. The first problem that we have trying to qualify to be a black revolutionary to be so-called Afrocentric, to be a black revolutionary. Your number one problem in trying to make those qualifications is that you are a domesticated person. Whether you like it or not, you are domesticated and you have become institutionalized regardless to how much you say, Assalamu alaikum. Shalom, black power, or whatever. You and I, we come from out of a domesticated people. Unlike the common squirrel. Slavery was an institution in America for hundreds of years. And those who were in the institution become and became institutionalized. Those who are in prison, those who are jailed, and you stay there for a certain period of time, after a while, you become institutionalized. The prison and the jail are institutions that are supposed to be for your rehabilitation. But instead, they become nothing but a place where you become institutionalized, an institutionalized person. And you begin to take on the mindset and the mentality of an institutionalized, incarcerated person. And even though you become free due to your years or your experience being institutionalized, you carry some of that with you no matter how much money you make, no matter what you do, that some of that is still in you. That is why some of these uh, persons they become what some of y'all say on the down low or some of them become homosexuals because of that experience an unnatural experience. It is unnatural to be confined in bars or if you are a goldfish, it is unnatural to be confined in a bowl in glass. So, just that experience of incarceration or being institu institutionalized has made us an unnatural people. One of the qualifications for us to become liberators and true revolutionaries is that we must we must uh, attempt to try to embrace and return back to what we might call our natural selves because all of these hundreds of years of mistreatment of living in a racist society has caused us to be an unnatural people. Here you are trying to behave, trying to talk, trying to walk, trying to act like you have some sense. But you have become an unnatural people because we have become domesticated. You and I, we are a domesticated human being just like they domesticated the cat and the dog. And many of y'all are so domesticated just like the dog wag his tail for his masa, there you are. You want 
your masa to look good upon you so your masa can throw you some biscuits or some praise, anything from your masa so you'll feel good about yourself just like a dog or a cat. When you give them a treat, they'll rub against you and they'll try to show you affection. They want to be close to their masa. Some of us, and I'm glad that many of you are not like that, but you do know that we, as a people, the majority, and I'm going to say it, you might not like it, but the majority of us act like house pets looking for praise, looking for something from the masa so that we can feel better, so we can wag our tails. And then when the masa give us something to do, go fetch it, spot. Go chase the ball, spot. That's what we do. That's how we behave. Then the masa will allow us to smoke some weed. Get a little money to ride around on rims. And whatever else, these little treats. These little treats. Because you're not free. These are treats for those animals that's become house pets and domesticated. Oh, man. Mm, mm, mm. How can you feel any black pride? How can you feel good about yourself? And you see, this is the reason why this channel, this voice always get terminated. That's why many don't like what I have to say because I have to tell you how it is. I have to bring us our reality. We are an institutionalized, cowardly people. That's why you're not free. That's why. No matter, and it's in your mind. And I don't care how you holler black power. I don't care how you holler black conscience and all this stuff that we love. Oh, salam alaikum. Say your being power. I don't care all that that you do. You can do it all day long. Look at your condition. You still a house pet. You still live to benefit somebody else because you're a slave. And you don't know how to break out of being institutionalized with all your wisdom, with all your beautiful words from these preachers. You still a slave. A black conscious slave, a black power slave, an Afrocentric slave. Malcolm X, during his time, he said that there are two types of Negroes. There's two types of slaves. He said that you had the house Negro. And the house Negro was one that was most times was close to the masa. And they become content and have accepted, I'm a slave, I was born a slave, I'm going to die a slave. I'm not interested in revolution, rebellion. This is just my life. And I'm going to do all that I can just to survive. Then we had the field negro or the field slave they were rebellious they had even though they were living in an institutionalized environment even though they came and had been under domestication some of that fire was still left in them the field negro so when you're having babies and when you are having all these different mentalities, what was the strongest mentality that was out there? If the field Negro, if the revolutionary Negro was in the majority, how could have slavery been as easy and last as long as it did in America? 
So common sense tells us that the house Negro mentality had to be in the majority. And what will a house Negro, how will a house slave, what will they teach their children? They're going to teach their children how to accept being a slave, being content being a slave. That's what they're going to teach their babies. So if this lasted for hundreds of years, this is their teaching. The mother house nigga, the mother house slave, taught her children how to respect and love Massa. And since they are in the majority, you're always going to have exceptions to the rule, but since the house negro, that house slave mentality is in the majority, common sense tells me that you, no matter how, again, how you holler black power, how Afrocentric you are, we are the children of house negroes. That's who we come from. Many of the those who really had the heart of rebellion, revolutionary, they were murdered, they were killed, they were gotten rid of. So, those who were left to survive, the majority had to be those with the mentality of the house negro. See, if this is true, if this is true, and it is, I mean, it's common sense, then you, you and I, we should understand why, what is going on today. That slave mentality, that house nigger mentality is in us. Excuse me a second. Okay. All right. It's in us. Many of you have learned how to fight it, but we have not learned how to fight it enough to qualify to get the job done that needs to be done. Because the first step is dealing with our mentality. That's what made us a good slave. Is because they made our minds. Accept. This domestication. The so called freedom. That the so called negro. Or black people. This so called freedom. What you have is not freedom. What you have is. Privileges. That's what you get. Anybody that has been incarcerated, you know that you are not given your freedom under incarceration. You're given privileges. So, many black folks living today, they believe and have been given the illusion of freedom when the only thing they have it's privileges. No man, no woman, nobody can give you freedom. Freedom is something that you must deserve and that you earn yourself. Any so-called freedom that somebody else give you is nothing but privilege. And that freedom, if another man give you that freedom, give you those privileges, they control that freedom. And they, if they gave it to you, then they can take it away. And that is what is happening here in America. These Caucasian, racist Caucasian people can give the dark European, the so-called Negro, can give us or gave us so-called freedom. And they manipulate. And they control 
what we can and cannot do. You and I are under their jurisdiction, not the jurisdiction of any God, any prophet. We are under the jurisdiction, the power and the control of Caucasian people. And the reason why you don't have real freedom, justice and equality is because you have become domesticated and all any bravery, any sign of revolutionary spirit that you have in yourself, it has been removed from your soul. Freedom is earned through bravery. And since we refuse for hundreds of years to be brave, then privileges was given to us. How was the black man and woman, how was the uh, descendants of slaves, how were we domesticated? It is amazing. How is it that a handful of Caucasian people on a plantation or basically in in America itself. How is it possible that a few of them control hundreds and thousands of slaves? Just like it's amazing when you see a few cowboys with, with hundreds of cows and this little few cowboys control and direct Hundreds of cows to go where they want them to go. If the cow was not domesticated, if the cow still had that wildness, that urge to be free, there is no way. There, there are no fences. So they cannot, the, the, the cows weigh just as much as the horses do. There is no way that these cowboys, these little few cowboys, could drive all these cows from point A to point B. But the cow and the chickens and the and pigs, domesticated animals, have become domesticated. They have become slaves. So they are programmed and have been programmed to do the will of the slave master. So some of them might become rebellious and get out of line, but the majority. Go wherever master go. Wherever master say go, wherever master say do, they do it. And that's what black America has done. That's what the descendants of slaves in America, that's what we have done. We have become the perfect slave. And in order to change this condition, in order to qualify to be a true black revolutionary, Afrocentric, and all these different things. In order to do that, you must, you must take this programming, you must destroy this programming, and become a new being. And you must understand that this is still in you, and you still behave in this manner, but you use black power, and I'm black conscious, and black this and black that. You use Frosting to cover up the fact that you still a house negro. That's what we are. Those are our parents. We did not come from those who are willing to fight this devil, these demons. We are the descendants of those who say, yes, sir, sir. Do what you can to survive, sir. Yes, sir, sir. Want me to shine your shoe? Scratch it where you don't itch. When the white man walked by you, look at the ground. You want to believe that you come from some great this and great that. That was a great this and great that hundreds and hundreds of years ago. You had no part of it. You are the direct descendants of those who submitted and bowed down and became domesticated by a wicked oppressor. And it's still in you. That's why you can't break their grip. 
There are many stages and forms of slavery. And once you break one chain, they put another chain on you. Matter of fact, it's so bad that you even put chains on yourself thinking that you're getting free. But the reality is, you're not. You're no closer to freedom than the house cat or the dog or the chicken. You don't believe me? Look at your situation. How are you going to argue with me? How are you going to deny your reality? How, how were these Africans, so-called Africans, how was, what method was used to, to uh, help form or cause the, uh, what, what, what was used in this domesticated domestication process. The number one thing that they use in domestication, even in animals, is they use fear. Fear of the unknown, which is death. So, you don't want to die. I'll kill you if you don't do what I say. So there you go. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll whip you. I'll beat you. The fear of death. The fear of physical pain and torture. They control you. They mess with your minds with that. Some type of punishment. They also do that in prisons and jails. They try to use fear and forms of punishment to control those of whom they have incarcerated. And then, now remember, this went on for hundreds of years. So our ancestors were always threatened every day with torture and death. And then they were made to watch. They were made to watch other black people being castrated, torn feathered, lynched, hanged, and whatever other atrocities that these devils could come up with. You was forced to watch your mother get lynched. You was forced to watch your sister get raped. Your mother get raped. Your father castrated. Burned at the stake. We were forced to watch these things. To, to be an example. If you get out of line. This will happen to you. Just like right now in 2012. They make certain Negroes examples. If you get out of line. This will happen to you. Don't talk like Angel Snub Nub 7 on YouTube. Because if you do. We'll terminate your channel forever. Banned and suspended. And some of y'all, uh, and you think, you think that you're not a slave. You think something, something is different now than it was then. Some of y'all on YouTube, you know Angel Snubbed Up 7, and you know that they have terminated so many of these channels. So you don't want to go through what I go through, so you tone down your rhetoric. You try to be careful what you say so the white folks don't get upset and terminate your channel. And you, just like those slaves back in the past, they did the same type of thing. Uh oh, look what they did to Kuta. They cut his foot off. I don't want that to happen to me. Fear. Cowardly. Scared. That's what they used. And they did this for hundreds of years. And they're still doing it right now today. Ain't nothing changed except the way the game is played and those who play it. And then you're given a religion called Christianity. And you are promised for uh, life forever. You're everlasting life. 
because they know that you fear death. And, in, and within that scripture, it teaches and they was taught that they should be good slaves. So they want to live forever. They want that heaven. They want to have a better life in the hereafter. So they do do and have done and still doing everything they can to be good slaves for their masa. And even though you might not and I might not be the best slaves, we also do the same thing. We are involved in activity to be good slaves. Again, fear of death. The need and the want to live forever. Being taught fairy tales. Being brought out of your reality. Because your reality is that you are a slave. Your reality is that you belong to somebody else. And everything that you are benefits them. Nothing. Nothing benefits or belongs to you. So you get involved. In fairy tales. And believing in virgins having babies. And rabbits laying eggs. And Santa Claus. And the, uh, the, 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 the dead shall come back to life. All these different things. That you need. Because your life. The reality of your life. Is so horrible. So then you begin to drift off. In fairy tale land, and that's where many of you are in fairy tale la la land, regardless. So now y'all want to go back to Egypt. You want to go back to Israel. You got all you got all these uh some some aliens or whatever gonna come out the sky and save you in a mothership. All these different things that you believe in. Because the reality of your situation is that you don't qualify to be a revolutionary. You do not qualify to be a black liberator. And you don't have and refuse to earn what is necessary to qualify to be what is needed to change your condition. You are comfortable in your incarceration just like your ancestors was those house Negroes. You think and want to believe that you come from out of those who were who were rebels and revolutionaries, but you are an Uncle Tom and a house Negro at heart. Now we're trying to be better. Some of us realize this. We're trying to be better, but look at your actions. Your actions are really not that of a black revolutionary or a rebel, it is that of a house negro. You just talk. That's all you do. Now, there are exceptions to the rule. But as a people, the majority of your people in this country are the children and they act and behave. They are house negroes. That's why I call us dark Europeans we have been domesticated and programmed with the white man's mind no matter how you shout black this and black that. Matter of fact, the fact that you shout black this and black that shows and continues to verify you have the white man's mentality because he made you a color and you still hold on to color. The, that, that color is what put us in the situation that we're, that we're in right now today. And you hold, embrace black supremacy, black this and black that. Those, those ancient ancestors prior to being brought here to America did not call themselves black nothing. There was no need. That race color bull crap was created by those who put you here and you want to embrace that foolishness because you, you are domesticated and everything that you are, all your learning, everything that you are, comes from out of your masa. You're not willing 
to think for yourself and open up your eyes. So that which created you can give you the new information, give you new heart and soul, bring you the rebel, that revolutionary spirit, so that you can qualify to get yourself up out of this condition. So you will remain a slave. You will remain and we will remain house Negroes until we qualify. Mm. You and I, we are domesticated. House Negroes, dark Europeans, we are slaves. Hold on just a second. We're going to go to part two.